Good day, students. Welcome to our subject, Physical Education 4. I am your lecturer, Mr. Rodolfo B. Fajardo, Jr. We will discuss the lesson 1. It is about the sport basketball. So the topic that we are going to discuss later on one by one are about the introduction of basketball, brief history of basketball, the dribbling skills, the relay dribbling, shooting, shooting contest, and the last one is about the equipments and facilities. So what are we waiting for? Let us now begin our topic one. It is about the introduction of basketball. But before anything else, let me ask you a question related to our topic. So what do you think is a basketball game? Okay, let me give you the definition of it. Basketball is a game played between two teams of five players each on a rectangular court. And also, it is usually indoors. Each team tries to score by tossing the ball through the opponent's goal, an elevated horizontal hoop, and the net called a basket. And also, the ball is passed, thrown, bounced, batted, or rolled from one player to another. Another thing, physical contact with an opponent can result in a foul if the contact impedes the desired movement of the player. So let me ask you a question again. What is the main objective of basketball? The main objective of basketball is to make a goal and score points. And also, a goal is made by shooting the ball through the basket or hoop. The goal post or basket for a team is in the opponent's court. Always remember that. Let us now proceed to our topic 2. It is about the brief history of basketball. Basketball was invented in the year of 1891 by James Naismith, a physical education instructor at the YMCA Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts, USA. The game achieved almost immediate acceptance and popularity, and the first collegiate game with the five players on each team was played in 1896 in Lowa City, Lowa, USA. Please don't forget to take down notes. For our topic 3, it is about the dribbling skills. Dribbling is one of the first skills you learn when picking up the sports of basketball. And it is also one of the most basic skills to play the game. With that in mind, Singapore Slinger ng Habin bring us through the five fundamental steps of dribbling. So let me give you it one by one. We have the five fundamental steps of dribbling. The first one is you need to use your fingers instead of your palm. You will find it easiest to control the basketball if you will hold it with the tips of your fingers. Use your forearm and wrist to bounce the ball. And also it make sure you are comfortable bouncing the ball with both hands. The second one is keep your knees bent. Your body should be kept low with your knees bent to maintain a lower center of gravity. Be sure to keep your body weight on the balls of your feet. 
instead of your heels and your knees cap shouldn't be covering your toes when you look down. This is the best form to keep your balance while dribbling. The third one is your back should be straight. But before we proceed to that, I have an additional. Your knees should be squared out, so you have the possibility to move in any direction and not provide any indication of your path to your opponents. This is for keep your knees bent. Okay, let us now proceed to our third one. So like what I have said a while ago, it is your back should, you have, yes, your back should be straight. Okay. So instead of having your back hunched over, it should be kept in straight posture while dribbling. And this will also be helpful in keeping your center of gravity low. Always remember that. Next is keep your eyes up. Beginners tend to keep their eyes on the ball or on their hands as they dribble. But you should avoid doing that. Instead, try to keep your eyes up to look out of our oncoming opponents and to watch the happening on court. The last one is dribble the ball below the waist or knees. According to Hanbin, the ball should be kept below your knees as you dribble to keep it out of reach from your opponents and to maintain a low center of gravity. If you are a beginner, you can try keeping the ball below your waist as a start. Let us now proceed to our topic 4. It is about the relay dribbling. On the whistle, players dribble around the cones. When they reach the end, the dribble straight back to the end of the queue. And also, the player then has the roll, the ball through the legs of their team to the person at the front of the queue. So this time, let me give you the dribbling relay drills, one by one. We have one-on-one -on -one continues, cat and mouse, changing hands, circle relay, confusion, crossover relay, crossover dribble, dribble moves drill, dribble wave game, footwork relay, full court dribble, in and out dribble, and the last one is the spin dribble. So you can search it for you to, to visualize the dribbling relay drills. Let us now proceed to our topic 5. It is about the shooting. Basketball shot, throwing the basketball toward the hoop. His shot hit the rim and bounced out. Bunk shot. A basketball shot that bounces off of the backboard before passing through the hoop. Dunk shot, stop shot. A basketball shot in which the basketball is propelled downward into the basket. Like most other ball games, to win in a game of basketball is to land more basket or outscore your opponent and yield a higher field goal percentage. Therefore, it is essential that you are familiar with the different ways that you are able to make a basket and score points. In this article, you will be able to share or sharing with the different types of basketball scoring shots and how you can execute them. So let me give you the fundamentals in shooting. To shoot accurately, square your shoulder to the basket and place your feet shoulder length apart. With your knees bent slightly and back leaning towards the basket, put the fingers of your shooting hand under the ball and tuck your elbows close to your body. Flick your wrist towards the hoop to release the shot. And also your index finger should follow through facing 
the basket after releasing the ball. Here are some commonly used types of shooting in basketball. Let me give you one by one. Let us begin in jump shot. A jump shot is the most frequently used for a mid to long range shots, including shooting beyond the arc. To achieve balance when facing the basket for a jump shot, you have to take a wide stance. It is also usually shoulder width apart. Bend your knees and share your shoulders. Make a fluid explosive upward lift and add the apex of the jump. Follow through by shooting the ball. Next is the hook shot. A hook shot is when the shot is made while your body is not directly facing the basket. To execute a shoot shot, you need to face the basket sideways so that your shooting hand dribbling the ball is facing away from the basket. This is also the stance to help guard the ball against your opponent. And this makes it difficult for your opponent to try to block the shot due to the distance created between you and your defender. Another thing, to make the shot, jump with your left foot pushing off the ground if you're making a right-handed shot or vice versa. And also the shooting arm should be slightly bent and it should thrust up upwards as the ball is lobbed with a flick of the wrist. Next is the bank shot. A bank shot is when any shot made where the ball hits the backboard before heading into the net. As you can see in our example picture beside. To execute a bank shot, Treat it as through your taking a jump shot but this time, aim is slightly higher by shooting for the backboard. Another thing, jumping higher can also sometimes mean jumping slightly backwards when aiming for the basket to prevent defenders from blocking the shot. And also the ball should not be hitting the rim too much after bouncing off the backboard. The ball should then bounce off the backboard and into the net. Okay, so let us now proceed to the next one. Next is free throw. A free throw is a shot attempt given to a player that was fouled and it is taken on the free throw line. The player must stay behind the free throw line when taking the shot. Before attempting the shoot, one must maintain their balance. Find the nail or dot in the middle of the free throw line and line your shooting foot against it. For right-handed, the shooting foot will be the right foot and vice versa. Another thing that you need to know is your elbow on your shooting hand must be lined up to make an L right under the ball with fingers spread out of the backspin. And aim for the back of the rim with your eyes focusing on the rims. Do not look at the ball while your execution is ongoing. Follow through your shot by keeping your hands up in the air for a second or two after releasing the ball. Next is layup. So what is layup? It is a shot made from short range by a player moving towards the basket. It is also usually utilizing the backboard if he approaches the hoop from an angle. This is also one of the most basic and common way of scoring a basket in the game. 
So how to execute a layup? Just dribble the ball towards the basket. If you're on the right flank, dribble the ball with your right hand. At the three-point line, or within two meters from the basket, take two giant strides toward the hoop and attempt to score by throwing the ball at the top corner on the backboard or lay the ball gently into the basket. So once again, it is the layup. Let us now proceed to our last example of fundamentals in shooting. It is the slam dunk. The dunk is usually the most spectacular shot and it is one of the toughest feats in basketball. It is usually requires more jumping ability than shooting skills. To execute a slam dunk, dribble and charge towards the hoop when ready to execute the dunk. Jump explosively to get as high as possible and lift towards the hoop. And also lift the ball above the rim and push or slam it forcefully through the rim. Another thing, most people jump off one foot, but you might find that you can jump higher off both feet. So there you have it. Six ways of scoring in basketball. Start practicing and perhaps find out which way works for your best depending on your role and position in the team. So always remember all the example of the fundamentals in shooting. Okay, let us now proceed to the next topic. Next topic is about the shooting contest. A competitive test in shooting. Competition in markmanship. A collection or aggregate of person or things. It is also the entire affair or matter. We can say it a concern, business, used chiefly in the praise the whole shooting match. Let us now proceed to our topic 7. It is about the equipment and facilities we use in basketball. We have the basketball court dimensions. The size of the court depends on the playing level. And also the size of the court for NBA and college games is 94 feet long and 50 feet wide. It is smaller for high school and junior high. So it has a difference between the two. Let us now proceed to our backboard and rim. The regulation height above the ground of the rim, or we call hoop, is 10 feet and the rim is 18 inches in diameter. And also backboards are 6 feet wide or 72 inches by 42 inches tall with the inner square being 24 inches wide by 18 inches tall. And next is the foul line. For all size courts, the foul line is 15 feet in front of the backboard. As simple as that. Next is the key. So here's the given example picture. The key is 12 feet wide and is the same for all basketball courts. The backboard extends 4 feet out over the baseline into the key. And also a half circle of diameter 6 foot extend from the foul line away from the basket to complete the key. Next is the three-point line or we called arc. For NBA basketball courts, the three-point arc is 22 feet to the center of the rim on the sides 
with a straight line extending out 16 feet 9 inches from the baseline. Past those points, the line extends out 23 feet 9 inches from the center of the rim. So here's the given example picture. The last one is about the line markings. All line markings on the floor are 2 inches wide and can vary in color. Always remember that. So we are done in our lesson 1 which is the basketball. So I hope you learned a lot and get ready for our quiz by the next meeting. Here are our references. See you to our next session. Get ready for the next meeting for our lesson 2. We will discuss the history of volleyball. We have the topic 1 to topic 7, which is the brief of history of volleyball facilities and equipments, the skills, the rules of the game, points, the change of ends, and the last one is the service. Thank you for listening and watching. God bless.